So let's take a look at what happens when we go into an object mode. One of the things that we have here is bus mode and then object. Well, we'll see the representation of the object panner goes from green in bus to orange in object mode. And it also allows us access to the unseen speakers that are in, in here. This source, now I can position just between the, the left front speaker and the left side speaker into what's known as the left wide speaker. So that wide speaker in the renderer is just here. So the cool thing about Atmos in that sense is that it allows you to create a full three-dimensional pan. So you can position an object anywhere in the three-dimensional space and it will smoothly pan around the entire, uh, entire room. Also allows you to structure the sound field. So that wide speaker is only accessible using an audio object. And that becomes really powerful when you're thinking about how that's going to represent over headphones. So the more speakers you have, the more accurate representation from physical transducers in a, your mix room you're going to have when listening over, um, over headphones. Coming up in a future uh, episode, we'll hear from Steve Jenowick. Steve and I sat together in this room for many, many weeks and uh, talked about Atmos concepts. And then we met up in London and talked about it in a studio where those wide speakers were not present. And Steve's words to me at that time were, it's representative, but I wouldn't choose to put a sound there if the speaker wasn't there. And it was at that point that we really kind of formalized that 9.1.4 or 9.1.6 was really what we wanted for music creation because it allowed complete coverage using transducers of that, of that sound field and confidence to place a sound in that mix position and have that translate into movie theaters, into speakers, into smart speakers, into uh, now headphones. So those wide speakers that are represented here are where those objects really start to come into their power. As I mentioned, we also have the ability in the bed to pan up overhead. So I can get to all of these three speakers using the bed, but that is equal power. So as I pan from the front, it feeds equally into the rear speaker as into the front overhead. And that's probably not what you want. When you're thinking about the Atmos sound field and the musical aspects of the Atmos sound field, you probably want a little more control over that. Now there are circumstances where f putting something into all channels of the overhead is going to be correct or feel right or glue things together. Those things like reverbs might be useful for putting, creating a drum room that is going to fill the entire space. And we'll hear different perspectives on that as we go through the series. But in terms of the Atmos system and how it applies to music, what we found is that people generally prefer the objects to be able to control exactly where they want those sound sources to be. So as I switch this into an object mode, and if I show the renderer behind it, so as I grab the panner here, you'll see that as I move front to back, um, it's going to position right the way up and down the, the left overhead. Now I'm going to send some signal to that. I'm just going to send some beautiful tone because, you know, pink noise is, uh, is a Dolby guy's best friend. So I'm going to do this at a low level so that you can see it, but not necessarily hear it because nobody really wants to hear that. So this pink noise is now being sent as an object to the back of the room. As I pan through that overhead space, it's going to move into the middle speaker overhead and then into the front overhead and ensure that it's always up in the ceiling. So I can very accurately position sounds in this sound field. So this becomes very useful and Steve will talk about this in his uh, use of the object beds. So Steve has created locations in this uh, mix room that he knows if he puts something into those two channels is where they're going to come out. This becomes about creating your own template and how you wish to work with the Dolby Atmos system. But in order to get front back differentiation, which is going to help you in spatializing the, the sound, it's key to use objects versus those overhead beds. Similarly, if I put this onto the horizontal plane, as I position sound going down the wall, here, I've got it into the right speaker. As I come back, I can get it into just the wide speakers and various things like that. So this helps 
to really control the horizontal aspects. Dolby Atmos for music creation, in my opinion, is all about you controlling the sound field, you being in charge of how your listener is going to experience the music that you're mixing. And what you put into Dolby Atmos and record down as an Atmos master file is what should come out of the other end. Once we've got this object that is sending audio to a particular location, there are a number of other controls that we can we can grab hold of here. So in the panner, I have a lot of control to increase the size parameter. So I can make that single point source fill all of the speakers in a room. You can make it very much mono. It will decorrelate those sounds and that experience, but it will essentially be that same sound fed to all speakers. 